Next. Matt Biddle. Uh, and here, by, very much by popular demand. <laughs> When we do a little search, I ask for, you know, who would you, who do you like to see on stage? And, uh, and Matt's name came up a lot. Um, you were in the uh, building search engines on uh, CD-ROM. Uh, and that now old. you're specialising in uh, digital media, social software, and uh, putting data on the web. Is that right? That's right. You know me well. Yeah. In past lives, um, you were a creative technologist for hire, um, working with companies like Nature, Juiced, BBC, bringing cutting-edge technologies into the mainstream, is that correct? That is correct. Um, and is it right in, in saying that You're really going to push me on this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now you are the, uh, the very same, uh, Matt, who is a nomadic CTO of, uh, of Doppler, um, the social network for intelligent travellers. That is correct. Well, then you should be here on stage and, uh, <laughs> and showing the, your slides. <clears throat> Okay, <clears throat> just got one, decided to just do one slide with four bits on it to absolutely minimize the confusion, the complication. So, right, so, it was, so the question was like, what's the best thing on the web? What couldn't you do without? And you know, there's all this stuff out there. There's the web browser, that's a good start, quite like that on the web. Um, you know, Google, lots of websites out there and search engines, but actually the thing I really like, the thing I've been doing loads with on the web over the last year, two years, is maps. Maps are, maps are really exciting. Maps can be made of all kinds of things. Um, and the, the thing I like about maps on the internet, right, the internet gives you superpowers. You can see at a great distance. You can see what things are going on on the other side of the world. You can get superhuman knowledge beyond the uh, bounds of an individual human brain through Google and your web browser and all that sort of thing. And you can see things that the naked, the naked eye cannot perceive. And maps are really good at doing that. So like there on the top left, there's a, a nice project called Cab Spotting um, by Stamen Studios, mentioned earlier on by Alfie. Um, they stuck a GPS to, or rather they got the, deep, the GPS data from every cab in San Francisco for a while. And look, that's drawn a map of San Francisco without any streets actually being there. There aren't the uh, words on it, there aren't the buildings, but the movement of the cabs defines uh, the city because they move around and you can see the heavier, denser areas where people pick up and leave and all this sort of thing. So I looked on Wikipedia uh, and it said, I have a bit of paper here to read from, a map is a visual representation of an area, a symbolic depiction highlighting relationships between elements of that space such as objects, regions, and themes. Which says it all, really. I mean, that's super exciting, isn't it? <laughs> um, but there's a nice thing. Uh, Matt Jones, who I work with at Doppler, found this really nice thing in a, in a museum in Sydney uh, last year, a picture, um, to explain what exhibitions were, these sort of interactive exhibitions and diagrams and things were to kids. And it said there, sometimes we draw pictures or make models to help us understand things. And that, for me, is why maps are so exciting and why the internet combined with maps are even more exciting because you take data, you take information. What we've got on the top right there is um, patterns of routing around the internet, how the packets get from A to B, how things get delivered, how things get to your web browser, um, and the path that they take. But it looks nothing like a map of the world. It's a completely abstract thing. But it's us, using this idea that um, we're pretty good at reading visual information, flat information, and mapping it onto something we understand but uh, give you some understanding about something that wasn't necessarily physical. Um, I love the Damaxian map, the uh, Bucky Fuller uh, thing, which is redrawing uh, the world map to show um, that actually the way we normally look at the map includes biases. You know, it's sort of up and down, and some countries look bigger because they are uh, close to the meridian, and you have these different projections. The Damaxian map, uh, one way of looking at it, it's still the world. You could still walk from A to B and follow that map, and you'd be following physics, but it puts the land in the middle and the water all around the edge. It turns the world into an island while still obeying the, uh, the laws of cartography. Um, and so the big thing on the internet that brought this all into the focus of particular people like me, developers, people who want to take data, turn it into something new, is the Google Maps. The, you've got that map, it's in your web browser. You click, you drag, and the map keeps on going forever. It's like a big game world that you can keep running around turns the world into something you can sort of drag through your web browser. Someone described it once as like looking at a blue whale through a letterbox. I think it's a lovely way to think about the world. You've got this huge world out there, and you just sort of drag it through your little 640 pixel square there. 
Um, and developers pick this up. They take data. Um, our site there, Doppler, we, we took all the, uh, the places that people, the popular destinations that people were going to, put them on a single map, took the map away from underneath it. You're still, you can still recognize the shape of the world underneath that. But it's not the shape of the world as defined by the geography, it's the shape of the world as defined by the world's travelers, how often they go to different places, um, and the relative importance of these places to the travel industry. Um, and we can also build maps out of things that don't even exist. I encourage you to go and look up uh, a project done by James Wallace called Brave, New Brave Noob World, where mapping Azeroth from the world of Warcraft, he went and derived the uh, gravity and various other physics um, in relationship to the size of humans and orcs and so forth. But again, he used slippy maps, let people drag around the world and uh, look at his data. So, every time you see a bit of data that has something to do with people and something to do with places, think about what else could you do with it on the internet? If you put it on a map, put it in a web browser, and encourage people to think about it in a different way. Thank you very much.